While I learned a lot about my CSM in the last video, I didn't have the chance to learn about the river or make any Victorian stockings. I had a lot of fun trying out different patterns like modern socks and more unique patterns like the bag from last time and the little tidy that I'm making this time. But this time around, I wanna use my CSM to make the next bit of my fully knit 1890s bicycling ensemble, the stockings. We are in week two of using my wonderful CSM. The goal this time is for me to fully knit some stockings for my 1890s biking ensemble. I have kind of an idea of the design in mind and it includes ribbing. I did not learn how to use the rubber last time. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just gonna practice some regular ribbed socks. So I'm gonna take the yarn that I used for the bag or purses last time, cause I have plenty of that left. And I am going to try to knit my first sock that I can then break out the Victorian pattern and go ahead and knit the Victorian style stockings with the fancy cuff. <laughs> Let's get to that. I just realized that I set up the, I guess it's called the rubber stopper inside the cylinder incorrectly. Ay -ay -ay. I'm struggling a little bit today. I'm tired, I have a headache, and so I might put this product down for today and come back at this tomorrow, fresh, energized, with some caffeine in me. So I'm gonna see you tomorrow and hopefully the rubber will work for me slightly better then. Good morning. It is a new day. It is still the morning. I am properly caffeinated and I am very excited to get going on this river. I know I said that I would put it down last night. However, I ate some dinner and it suddenly came to me that some parts of the setup I might not have done correctly. So I tweaked the setup a little bit and look at what I was able to do last night. This is, it might not look like much, but this is my first bit where the ribbing actually worked. If you look on the inside, you might be able to tell it a little bit more. You got some pearl stitches going on there. Then I was able to get it to actually rib in the entire round. There was a few false starts. So this is, I didn't go straight from this to like a fully one by one rib tube here. There was a lot of very terrible scraps that I had to discard of. Then I felt confident enough that I knew how to work the river and that I had set it up and kind of tuned it appropriately that I went ahead and made a rib sock. We start with a one by one rib. I'm so excited. It goes to a one by three rib. We did the heel and then you have the one by three rib on the top of the foot. The hem I didn't do properly. So it's probably gonna be a little bit tight when I finish it. I also dropped a few stitches that I had to catch here. Now, let me take you along with me. Right, Nutella? <laughs> let me take you along with me as I crank the second sock. Nutella, you wanna crank a sock? Let's go crank a sock. Yeah. I am now done cranking out the second sock. I'm very pleased with it. I really like the turned down hem. I love the fit. 
I still definitely had some trouble dropping a lot of stitches. I kind of want to move on to learning how to do the fancy rib top for my bicycle stockings because I think it's probably going to take me a few false starts. Again, it's called gentleman's turn down socks, but I want turn down stockings with a fancy top, so I'm going to make it for myself. And the one that I think I want to do is called the rope pattern. So it seems like it's a cabling pattern. The yarn I'm going to use is the exact same yarn. I still have it. I think I bought too much when I made my first ever pair of stockings. I'm going to be using that again. I'm currently on the 60 needle cylinder. I'm going to make a tension swatch just to see how large that piece will be, but I'm pretty sure that I'm going to have to go up to the 72 needle cylinder. Let's cut to calculating what we need to do and I'll let you know from my tension swatches how all that turned out and what cylinder we'll be using. As I suspected, I made the gauge or tension swatches on the 60 cylinder. I got the size that I needed, but it just ended up being a very see-through fabric and I wanted it to be a little bit denser. The highest number of needles that I have for a cylinder is 72. So I went up to my 72 cylinder needle, went up on tension, and I made a swatch that I am much happier with in terms of fabric density. It's not perfect, but that's okay. This is what I can do with my machine and I think it looks pretty solid so I'm happy with that. I measured out the actual gauge of those swatches and I did some rough calculations. I might take a little bit of a mental break first to get some sugar in me maybe. Sadly no caffeine it's too late in the day but some sugar in my system, some food in my system and then sit down and let's try going over the pattern for the Victorian style stocking. I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm feeling much better after getting some nutrition in my body. I thought that off camera, I would prepare the sock machine a little bit with a ribbing. The pattern calls for a four and one rib. However, and isn't there always a however I feel like when I'm doing these projects? <laughs> and an uneven number, aka five, of the whole repeat of cables doesn't work. The spaces mean that needles start jumping. I don't know if that makes any sense, but trust me, I have tried restarting this like three or four times now. At this point, I'm worried that I'm gonna start bending my needles to past the point where I can use them and I don't have any more needles. Now, I know it's not going to be exactly what the pattern called for. I think I can do a three in one rib and then do kind of like a three sized cable where you're just switching over the one needle at a time and not doing a two and two cable. Oh, and what I completely forgot to mention before, in my last video, you'll have seen that the claims where you can create a pair of socks in 35 minutes that I did tie myself last Last time just a plain sock was taking me like 30 to 35 minutes not a pair just one sock I haven't tied myself yet using the ribber I'm going to try to time myself a little bit more just to tell you how long it took me in actually working on the machine to finish one of these stockings for my bicycling outfit <laughs> all right let's actually get to the machine We have officially finished the fancy turnover or turn down part of my stocking and I'm at 31 minutes and 13 seconds. So that took me just as long as it takes for me to now knit just one plain sock without any ribbing. Now we're gonna go onto the leg and I have, according to my calculations, Oh, good. I don't know if I can read these anymore. Ah, 155 rows to go. I'm just gonna run through 155 rows. I am just under 10 minutes later and I am fully set with the rest of the leg and it is now time to turn the heel, knit the foot, and then turn the toe. I'll show you a little bit of what I'm doing because I think I got some questions last time on how you do a heel turn. For those of you who are wondering how I turn the heel, it is done on the machine and I take only half of the stitches and that's what these marks are for. They're basically target marks for when I'm working the heel and I work one less each time until I get to the point and then I increase again. So I'm decreasing 
and then increasing the number of needles I'm working on and that'll create like a cup shape for the heel. And I do that exact same process for the toe and that is how you get the sock. First stocking is off the CSM. It's not exactly what I was imagining it to be. However, it is still really, really cute. I have some finishing to do. Like I said, I like how it turned out. I did have to deviate from the original pattern in order to make it work on my machine. And that kind of left me with a question of, are these the only pair of stockings that I wanna make? And I think the easy answer is no. That's kind of the beauty of the CSM is that it gives me the time to try out multiple things. Let me finish up the second stocking. stocking is coming off the machine. I'm really happy about it. I hand finished the stockings and then my cabled versions of these black stockings were done. I was pretty happy with them, but there were a few things that were a little bit wrong. When I folded over the top, not only is the design inside out, but the stockings overall are far too short. I do like how the rest of the stockings turned out, but it's kind of back to the drawing board for me. You know, I enjoy both of the socks and stockings that I've made with the river so far. This one was a little bit more of a struggle. The finishing took hours just because I had to fix all those drop stitches, but they're still very wearable. And even though that these black stockings, which I'm still wearing, I'm not taking them off, they're too comfortable, aren't exactly what I was looking for in my 1890s biking ensemble, it's still a really big win in my book because it shows how much better I've already gotten from just one pair of socks to the next. So they're going to see use, just maybe not with my 1890s biking ensemble. And I want to make the original turned down stockings. I reread the instructions and I think there's two new things that I'm going to try. The first is basically an e-wrap cast on that I learned with my knitting machine. The other bit which is more complicated and I've never tried before is getting the turn down right. And that is, I now understand that they're trying to tell me to turn the work inside out on the machines and reorder the needles so that I am knitting it inside out going forward so that when I fold down the top I have the pattern showing. Two new things and the third which is the learning from this stocking is that when you stretch out knitting stitches in order to fit the width of the widest part of my calf you lose height. <laughs> so I don't need 155 stitches for the leg length, I actually need 155 plus the 35 that I used for what was supposed to be the turn down to make it the height that I wanted the stockings after you turn it down. Basically three things to watch out for. Well, no, I'm lying. It's four because I also wanna do color work this time. Am I taking on too much? Maybe, <laughs> am I still gonna try it? Yes, <laughs> we'll see how much I struggle. And I am going to start by hanging what they call a rough selvage on the machine, and then we'll go to the correct selvage or the e-wrap cast on.
We are now done with the fold over on the top of this stocking. It turned out so much better than I was expecting. Now we have to move on to making the fold over work. And from reading these instructions in the manual, I believe what I'm gonna be doing is removing the needles from the cylinder with the work still on it, turning the work inside out, and then placing the needles back on the cylinder so that I continue working so that the first bit will be inside out and the next bit will be right side out so that when I turn the cup over, you'll see the pattern from the right side. I might just lose all of my work off of my needles. Like I feel like that's very likely to happen. I maybe should have practiced this on a non-important piece of fabric first. Keep your fingers crossed for me that this works out well. Let's try it. And now it says to turn the fabric inside out. Work is inside out. This is risky, but it might be, oh, everything's falling. Okay, that's too risky and too scary. So what probably needs to happen is I need to enter new needles upside down. So I'm just gonna, I'm going to try it and then we're gonna do a slow flip of it and I think that could work. I feel like I'm, I'm heating, I'm warming up with the stress of doing this. Alright, now it's time to flip this one and then I'm gonna see if I can just lift it up very gently, flip it, and put all the needles back in place very gently. <sighs> My hands are so sweaty. <sighs> that worked. Now we're gonna flip it. I'm gonna hold on to all the needles very tightly. Flip the work. We got two in place. Four. We did it. The project is now inside out on the needles. I think Nutella is asking to be let outside. I need something to eat. So I'm gonna go take care of us first and I will see you again after that. Nutella and I have eaten. I feel much better. So it is time to keep going on our lovely stocking. I don't know that I'll show you quite as much detail this time, just because we have done this quite a few times now. <laughs> Let's go. The stocking is now off the machine and it went quite well. Still a few mistakes. The stocking isn't finished yet and I'm not sure if I explained it properly in the past, but when a sock or a stocking comes off the CSM, it's finished the machine knitting portion, but it still requires finishing. This is what it looks like right now. Hold on, let me show you. We still have the cast on bonnet attached, so this needs to be undone. The other bit that needs to be finished is, while it's nice to have some breezy toes, I would prefer that my toes be covered as part of the stocking, and so the toe has to be kitchenered together. However, I am quite tired tonight, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and maybe just work on some of the finishing steps and then I will see you tomorrow for the second stocking. <laughs> last night I finished off my stockings. You might have noticed this last night when I showed you the preview. The top is very tight. I just think that with it stretched out so much it doesn't really show off the color work pattern. Today I'm gonna make the second stocking and also yesterday when I was knitting the stocking I didn't time myself because I didn't want to add like any extra pressure. Today I will time myself so that you can get a little bit of an idea of maybe how long it takes for me to make something like this. I don't think that you need to see me making another one of these so we are just going to quickly jump ahead to the future when the second one is done.
I am very happy to say that these diamond colorwork stockings will be the ones that I wear with my 1890s bicycling ensemble. I completed all the accessories so far, including hand knitting these gloves and crocheting the tam, and now of course these wonderful stockings. And it is time for me to work on the bloomers and the sweater next. So if you'd like to see me work on that, please feel free to subscribe. I hope that you enjoyed watching me make several pairs of stockings. It took me a little bit longer than my original one week estimate, but that's because I spent over three hours on just the cuff part of both of these diamond stockings. Thank you again so much for joining me this time and I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye.